Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me. And I always appreciate it that you spend a little bit of your time to listen to my podcast or read my articles or check out my recipes. Um, it really is uh, exciting to me because I hope it will change your life. Uh, that is one of the exciting things um, that I love to do because I know how much it changed my life and my family's life and my friend's life that kind of snowballed and turned into a business when for years I resisted that. Um, but it, it, it brought so many benefits to so many people and it helped so many people that I wasn't even uh, aware that it could help um, that it really kind of turned into something bigger than just me. Um, and that's the exciting thing. When we find things that work in our lives, that help us heal, um, that help our family. We talk about them, we share them with our friends, and that's how things get started. That's how people get educated and learn to not only live a healthier lifestyle, um, but to heal their lives when they're struggling or hurting. Because I really believe with all my heart that the body is designed to heal you. And that when you give it the things that it needs, and you practice um, not just giving it the right nutrients and the right foods, but also practice um, what you're thinking about, um, the stresses in your life. Um, and when you learn to control your thoughts in a way that is more positive, that benefits your body. Because one of the things that I have found is that I can literally feel um, disease created in my body when I get stressed out or when I'm struggling emotionally. I can feel those hormones kick in that cause anxiety and stress and um it, it has been a wonderful practice myself. I've learned to control that through a lot of different ways. Um, I practice uh, thinking a lot positive, a lot more positively than I used to. Um, I always know that, you know, it, things always seem to work out. Things are, um, and if they don't work out, if there's things that are happening, they're bad. There's always a light that's shining down the road that this struggle that I'm having right now is going to lead to something better. And that has happened again and again and again throughout my life. And that's one of the benefits of growing older. I'm almost 60 now. And I tell you, I am, I have found so many benefits and wisdom that I wouldn't have had when I was younger. And I love this age. I love um, the life lessons that I've learned. And I love that I don't freak out so much anymore about life because I know I've had a lot of life experience. I know that, um, you know, if you, do certain things in your life. And if you practice um, having faith and believing in that things are always working out, they do. And uh, it's, a, it's just a wonderful way to live. So I didn't mean to get off on that tangent. Um, I really want to talk about goat's milk kefir. But in order to do that, um, I want to go way back about 18 years in 2001, when I had my tiny little daughter, Holly. And goat's milk was a godsend for my daughter. She was born eight weeks premature, and she kind of rocked my world. And I really, this is before I found Cultured Foods, and I became a, a woman on a mission to help her be well. Nursing her was a really big challenge. She was born so prematurely that she didn't have a lot of strength in her to nurse for very long, and nursing takes a lot of strength out of these little tiny babies. Um, so she, because she couldn't do that, um, I had to supplement her with with bottles too. And I nursed all that and everything. But suddenly when she turned 10 months old, when she was still very, very tiny, um, she decided she was done nursing. She didn't want to nurse anymore. And I panicked because I knew that nursing her would give her the best nutrients that she needed to be healthy. And I wasn't producing enough milk without nursing her. So um, honestly, this was when I believe the divine plan occurred. I didn't know it yet, but her entrance into this world was a huge shock for me. Um, I couldn't believe I was I was pregnant at the age of 40. And that pregnancy turned into a nine month, really a terrible nightmare for me that ended with this beautiful, sweet three, three pound baby that turned my world upside down. Um, she was born at like four pounds, but then very quickly she went down to three pounds. And I was trying with all my heart to keep her healthy and looking for things that she, you know, could consume as she trying to get her to grow and put on weight. And, um, that was about, and she was about 10 months old, but she really was so tiny that she really didn't look 10 months old. But when she quit nursing, that was when I found, uh, goat's milk and goat's milk kefir. And Holly 
loved it. Um, she uh, drank it so much. I put a spoonful of kefir in every bottle that she drank, and she just thrived on it. Um, I would watch her do things like never before. I got it from um, a local farmer that would that uh, sold raw goat's milk, but I also did regular goat's milk too that wasn't raw, and Holly loved it so much. She did so well on it. And I remember taking her to her well baby visit, you know, at the doctor's and her doctor smiling and saying, oh my gosh, I worry so much about these little preemies, but just look at her. Look how she's growing now. And all her problems with sleeping through the night um, stopped. And I was giving her kefir at the same time I started the goat's milk. And um, that was the very beginning of me finding kefir. That was when I first found it. And I gave it to her and she started gaining weight. She stopped picking up colds. Um, and the color in her cheeks was gorgeous. It was this glow of health. And I can remember looking at her and my husband, and I would look at her and she just looked wonderful. It was just, she just transformed and she was doing so well that I felt like I'd really found the answer. And really it was Holly's transformation that made me start drinking kefir for myself. It was, you know, back then that my health problems started to vanish one by one when I started drinking kefir, because at first I gave it to Holly and then I started doing it. And how I wish I had known about kefir before I had Holly, I think a lot of my problems would have not been as severe or I wouldn't have had it at all. I don't know that now. It's hindsight. It's 2020. But um, I just wasn't as healthy as I could have been. And I desperately needed this kefir in my life. Um, but the beautiful thing is that I believe that what we seek is seeking us and that we're guided to the things that we need. And um, before that, I wouldn't have found Keith because I didn't need it, but I needed it for Holly. And because Holly needed it, it helped me because sometimes a mom will help her child before she helps herself. And consequently, I did it to help Holly and in turn, it's helped me too. So um, what, you know, I was, I was continuing to give Holly this every day. Like every time she had a, a bottle or anything, I would put a little spoonful of kefir in it and she loved the goat's milk so much that um, I really started exclusively giving her that because I I wasn't making enough milk anymore and uh, she loved it and started to thrive on it and I really believe it would have made a huge difference in my life had I had it earlier during my you know before I got pregnant but you know all of these struggles have turned into blessings now so I'm thankful for each and every one of them um, because now, years and almost two decades later, I found, you know, all kinds of new sources of uh, fresh raw milk, goat's milk right by my home. And I love to turn it into kefir. I don't always use goat's milk, but I, I think of all of the milks out there. And there's a lot of non-dairy. You can do non-dairy too. I've got 18 different types of non-dairy milk you can make kefir into. But I think of all of them, goat's milk is, is my favorite. However, goat's milk kefir is different. Uh, and it has a few differences in it that I want to explain to you. And um, I want to tell you there's a lot of benefits to um, goat's milk that don't aren't in regular milk. And so I want to explain them to you so you'll understand that. Now, number one, this is really, really important. And this is something that I've um, a lot of people have been helped with. And that is goat's milk is less allergic. There is a protein in cow's milk called alpha-1 casein that many of the individuals are allergic to. Um, now, not all cows produce this A1 casein. Um, the milk from A2 cows produce none of these inflammatory effects that the A1 casein does. And you can actually buy A2 milk in the stores now. Um, it'll have big A2 milk on the card, and I see it in my regular grocery stores now. And it's delicious, by the way. And um, so if you're struggling with allergies, that's important to know. Goat's milk primarily contains only A2 casein, and protein-wise, it's the closest to human breast milk. So it really is a wonderful choice for you. Um, if you can't get goat's milk, try that A2's cow's milk. Um, if you want to, if you're having some allergic symptoms, kefir really transforms the milk and really changes it into a completely different food. It loads it with probiotics, but it also adds vitamin C, vitamin B to it. It takes out the lactose, so it's 99% lactose-free. So even cow's milk is a very different food when, it, when it's fermented and made into kefir. But goat's milk is even goes even a little bit further because it's missing that A1 casein that so many people are allergic to. So that's number one. Okay, 
Uh, number two, goat's milk stays creamy. This is something that I get a lot of emails about. Now, when you make goat's milk kefir, it will not thicken like regular cow's milk kefir does. It doesn't get that thick curd. It stays creamy um, and delicious, but it doesn't get thick. And I got, you know, people write me all the time saying my goat's kefir isn't thickening. It's not working, but it is working. But because it's just because of the proteins of fat, if there's a structure of proteins and fat in goat's milk that allows it to not thicken. So it stays super creamy. I mean, really creamy. Um, and it's delicious, but it's not going to get the thick curd that you would get in um, cow's milk. Now, um, Goat's milk has more prebiotics. This is number three. Goat's milk, and one of my favorites, has more prebiotics than cow's milk. Oleosaccharides are prebiotics that are found in foods like mother's milk and also in goat's milk. And, and it is a very um, important prebiotic. When, when we're infants, we can't consume this prebiotics, but our microbes can. So I love it that our mother's milk, whenever somebody's nursing their baby, nourishes our, our microbes and an important portion of our anatomy. So there are thought to be four to five times more oleosaccharides in goat's milk compared to cow's milk. And so when babies, uh, you know, get drink mom's milk and they nurse, they get these oleosaccharides, but you can also get it in goat's milk. And it is a very powerful prebiotic. And a prebiotic, if you don't know, is food for your bacteria. It makes it grow and multiply. It makes it super strong. It makes it fortify itself in a stronger way and really helps your micro, your microflora really flourish and become healthy. Because the more good bacteria you have, the less harmful pathogens you have. And they dominate and keep everything in balance in there for you. And since you're, you know, 100 trillion uh, bacteria, it's really important that you understand what's happening inside of you. And that is to nourish and help your good bacteria to flourish. And you do that with prebiotics. And goat's milk is going to have four to five times the prebiotics that cow's milk does. So that's kind of cool. Now, number four, goat's milk is easier to digest. Goat's milk contains less casein than cow's milk. And the fat molecules are actually smaller and it makes it easier to digest. So only 2% of goat milk is curd compared to 10% in cow's milk. So when you have goat's milk, you can digest it so much easier than you would regular cow's milk. So I really see this a lot with people who have kids who are allergic to things. I really see them flourish on goat's milk and goat's milk kefir. Um, they do very, very well on it. I really recommend that if you're if you've got a kid that's struggling, I mean, Holly just transformed on it. So it has been, you know, something I really paid attention to uh, when she was little. And we still consume consume goat's milk, kefir sometimes. And I still make a lot of goat cheese. Oh, goodness sakes. I make my own. I have recipes on my website if you're interested on how to make your own goat cheese. But we love it at our house. I make it all the time. It's super easy to make. It's loaded with probiotics lasts a long time in your fridge and it's so much better for you. And it's really fun to make. I, I do it all the time for fun because you basically just, you know, put a little culture in some goat milk and let it culture till the next day. And then it, you know, you strain it and it turns into the most beautiful, uh, goat cheese. I just absolutely love it. So if you're interested, go to culturedfoodlife.com and type in goat cheese and you'll see, um, you'll see the recipe that's really fun and easy to make. Okay. Now, Number five, goat's milk is lower in lactose than cow's milk. Um, when you make goat's, uh, goat's milk or cow's milk into kefir, all of it becomes 99.9% .9 lactose free. So um, the, the thing here is that goat's milk is already lower in lactose. So um, if you're just trying to drink the milk and not the kefir, you're going to get less lactose in goat's milk that hasn't been made into kefir. Because the microbes eat the milk sugars, leaving you that tart taste in the milk. And you kind of get that taste from goat's milk. You kind of get that strong flavor. That's because there's the it's got that twang in it because the microbes have eaten some of the lactose out of the milk. So here's the deal with that. In the beginning, when you if you get fresh raw uh, goat's milk, 
it tastes, it doesn't taste sour tart. It doesn't have that strong goat taste when it's fresh. Um, the longer it sits, because there's good microbes in goats, raw goat's milk, um, it'll start to get that twangy taste. And that's the good bacteria is eating the sugars out of it. But regular, you know, when you get it really fresh, you don't really notice any kind of strong taste from it. Um, and I really like it. I like the taste of it. Um, but as it sits around, if it sits along, you know, three, four days, it starts to get that twangy goat taste. So, and that is why. Okay, number six. Goat's milk is naturally homogenized. Now, homogenized simply means to make uniform in consistency. So most store-bought cow's milk in factories is homogenized. So they take the cream and they take the milk and they homogenize it so it doesn't separate into cream and, and milk. You get, you get a layer of cream on top naturally in cow's milk. And um, it just separates onto the top of milk if you've ever gotten raw cow's milk. And, um, but goat's milk is naturally homogenized and they don't need to do that to it. And that's because the fat droplets are emulsified and the cream does not separate because um, it's really interesting. It's, it's really interesting to see that in goat's milk, that it's just naturally that way. That's because the fat molecules are smaller and so are the proteins. So everything is more uniform. So um, homo homogenization is, is probably, in my opinion, it's not really a good thing because they alter the milk in some way. The cow's milk, when I'm talking about cow's milk in this in this instance, because goat's milk doesn't need to be homogenized. Um, but I think it's better to get it non-homogenized um, because I think that's the way that it it's more natural. It doesn't undergo some kind of a, a process um, in the in a factory. You're getting just the way it is um, in its purest form, and I think it's better for you. And there's a lot of milks that are sold that way now. But just remember, goat's milk is naturally homogenized, so you never need to look for that. Okay, and the last one, goat's milk is higher in minerals than cow's milk. Goat's milk has 13% more calcium, 25% more B6, which is really important, by the way. We need lots of B6, and 47% more vitamin A, and 134% more potassium than regular cow's milk. And that's a lot. All of those, that's a lot across the board. And uh, we don't talk a lot about vitamin A, but it's really, really important for healing. Um, when you don't have enough vitamin A, you struggle to get better from anything, from whether it's a cut scrape or if it's a cold or flu. You need lots of vitamin A to help you recover from that. And in goat smoke, you get 134% more um, uh, potassium, which is also crucial as a mineral in your body, and 47% more vitamin A, um, than you would in cow's milk. That's a really big difference, and it's huge, and it really is very helpful. And I think it's one of the reasons Holly did so well. It's also, you know, easily digested because goat's milk is more digestible, and that's because of the bioavailability of the vitamins and minerals. It's just easy to digest. So um, if you want to learn how to make goat's milk kefir, I highly, highly recommend it. It was fantastic for Holly when she was a baby. And I've had so many people tell me how much it's helped them. It's delicious. They even sell it at some health, health food stores now. And it has a lot of, um, I think there's a goat milk kefir. I'm not sure if it's Red Farms, but there is a, some, I think it is Sprouts and they're very, very good. And they're very delicious. And I've even bought them and liked them. Um, but I highly recommend it. Um, and if you want to learn how to make kefir, then especially goat's milk kefir, uh, check out this link and, and I'll put the article in the description below and I can teach you how to make goat's milk kefir. And guys, it's so easy. You're just putting a culture in the kefir for 24 hours and letting a culture in the next day you're going to have goat's milk kefir. So if you're interested in that, head on over to culturedfoodlife.com um, and or look at the description below. Uh, you'll see the link and I'll give you that link. Um, I've got some recipes for goat kefir and goats. You can use any of my recipes for kefir with goat's milk kefir. It all works. Um, it all tastes delicious. And um, I think it would really help you, especially if you're struggling with allergies or you have a, a, you know, a young kid that's not doing well. This is so good because of the high amounts of vitamin A in it that's going to help your child heal and do well. And especially you. I've seen a big difference when we consume it too. So thank you guys for listening. Um, we're going to have a new podcast every Tuesday 
and I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy days to get a little bit of understanding about some things maybe that you didn't know about and uh, goat smoke them. I really love it. It's great. I, I mean, I still drink regular cow's milk and make that into keeper too. I love all of it. Um, it's just fun to switch it up, especially when I can get fresh raw goat smoke. That's my favorite. So, but you don't need that. You can even buy the store brought kind and that will make great keeper too, or it will just help you to have more prebiotics in your gut that's going to allow your good bacteria to grow and multiply and you're going to get a lot of nutrients from it and minerals that perhaps you are needing in your life. So thank you guys and we hope to see you uh, next week and always and I appreciate you listening. Have a great one.